You're listening to The Jam Price Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is acclaimed award-winning actress, uh, Sonia Smits. And I'm so looking forward to talking with her about this wonderful movie entitled Better Days. Welcome to the show, Sonia. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you here. I love Joan Carr Wiggins, who has written and directed this uh, film, and she's been on my show two other times. I just adore her work, uh, and I want to get into a deep dive into working with her, but how did you come to this project with her? Well, actually, I was fortunate enough that Joan approached me uh, with uh, this particular project in mind and saying that she would like me to do it. So I thought, okay. <laughs> so that was the start. <laughs> and then I read the script and it was pretty mind blowing how full the role was that she had written, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's your movie. It's your mm -hmm. movie and <laughs> you give a really riveting um, performance in this film. You have so many different emotions that you go through throughout this movie. And I just, I loved it. I just love this movie. I, you know, that's why I like Joan because she writes movies for mature women, basically, mm -hmm. and men uh, also. Yeah. But, you know, it's always written from a, a female perspective. And this one is a really good one for so many women who are going through what, your character went through. So the audience knows a little bit more about what Better Days is about. Why don't you give us a brief synopsis of the movie, Sonia? Well, the movie um, really uh, starts out with uh, the character of Kate. Kate telling, talking to the audience and saying, okay, this is what happened in my life. No, don't start here. Let's start there. And it follows really her husband's death, sudden unexpected death. And it follows her through her uh, rather unpredictable uh, stages of, of, of grief and coping with the sudden loss of her husband and, uh, and ultimately how, how she should behave or, sh or shouldn't behave <laughs> going through that. So I love it because um, so many things are unexpected, you know, in this mm -hmm. film. Um, uh, Joan, again, you know, didn't fall into any of the, you know, traps that one could have with this particular yep. uh, character, for sure. Um, for you, what was the most difficult part of portraying, portraying Kate in this film? Well, I think for me, almost in in, in a mm, in a practical sense, because there's such a scope uh, with the role and some of the behavior that Kate indulges in, for lack of a better word, is is pretty kind of out there. And so, I guess for me, the most difficult thing, but in a way, ultimately, it was not so difficult because I just decided to to trust Joan to tell me is basically to kind of to not be afraid to kind of go for it in all its uh, strangeness and eccentricities and extremes really of emotion. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So you trusted you, you had a lot of trust with her. As yeah. A you had to kind of hand it over, but I figured Joan wrote it and I've seen her other films and, and to your point, she writes beautifully, which is very rare. Yes. for mature women and it's not uh cliched or on point there's always kind of nice surprises about you know how her characters behave which is not necessarily the way you know you're expected to behave and there's something freeing in that you know definitely there's something there very definitely freeing in that but i think it because she writes like real life. I mean, these are the kinds of things that would happen in real life for many. I mean, I don't know about everything, you know, but, well. uh, but certainly uh, a great deal of it is, you know, mm -hmm. what one might do after a loss of their, the, the love of their life um, after mm -hmm. many, many years. And, you know, so suddenly and tragically, that you never know how someone's going to respond and react to it. But mm -hmm. I love it because it is a film of 
self-discovery, you know, Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. learning more about who we are through our grief, you know, Mm -hmm. how we can come through that in a different way. Yeah. And in in this character's case, in Kate's case, she got married quite young and had children and had a career and, and never planned on this happening as we often don't. So it's, it's, it's a, it's not only the loss of her husband, but it's like, well, now what, what I, what am I without him? I have sort of, for the first time, really as an adult, I have, I have a change in the structure of my life. And what do I do with that? You know? Exactly. Exactly. And she does some pretty wild things. She does. <laughs> she does. Yeah. I, I love the fact that she would just go to the woods and scream. So, <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's it's interesting because I had a friend who was, have a friend who was recently widowed and she saw the film and I was worried about it. She's maybe about four years ago or something. Still, it's pretty recent because it was a long time. She's got adult children. and But she, and I thought how, and she's been grieving a lot, this, mm-hmm. this, this person, this, this friend. And I thought, but she loved the movie. And she said, I scream. I go out in nature and I scream. It's like, good. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's so- true. It, yeah, I would imagine it would be. I mean, because mm-hmm. you're oh, probably overwhelmed, I'm sure, mm-hmm. when something like that happens. And, and again, unexpectedly. Yeah. Uh, how was that freeing for you as an actress? And how many takes did that take? Because you did it in the film. It's quite a few times. In it's quite story, a few. But, but well, <laughs> um, well, because of the nature of, of the film, which was, you know, not a huge budget film, you know, you kind of went for it. Plus we were shooting in the winter outside and it was cold. So, you know, you kind of got it right as, as right as you could the first or second time. <laughs> yeah. but I saw that. I said, yeah. that's no. And you're up in Canada and you're filming. Yeah. yeah. And it was not warm. <laughs> no. And I was like, I thinking that was like, oh my God, she must be freezing when she's talking this, <laughs> for sure. But that's, you know, the the joy of filmmaking, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You've been, now, have you ever, I mean, you have done, you've had a prolific career. You've done many things and we'll dive into that a little bit further too. But have you ever carried a film uh, like this? In time? Because you are, as I said, it's, it's, mm-hmm. you, it's all you in this film. And, yeah. and you go through so many different emotions. Have you in the past had to carry a movie like this before? Um, yes, I have, but it's been a, a number of years and I got a bit of a break because someone played my younger self. I played sort of from 18 to 50, but I didn't play the 16 year old. That was pushing it. Uh, but uh, that was a film I was very proud. Of. It was called Diviners and it was Margaret Lawrence, who's one of our top Canadian uh, writers. And uh, it followed a woman through her journey of yeah, her life. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so but, you've done, yeah. you've, you've gone through this process before then. For yeah. sure. You've worked with uh, David Cronenberg. And, yes. You know, the yeah. great director. And he, you're in one of his cult classics. I am. <laughs> you're in Videodrome. <laughs> Videodrome. And it's so funny because it's obviously a class because I did that when I was in my mid 20s. Oh, my goodness. And and now I I have a horse. I was at a stable and somebody said, oh, could you please? My son loves, is a huge fan. He's he's 25 and he's a huge fan of, of video drama. It's like, really? Like, so now how many years later, other 25 year olds, my, my daughter's boyfriend did his thesis on, on my movie before he met me. Oh, so it's goodness. like- yeah, it was, it was, so it's like, okay, I guess it is a cult classic. <laughs> he did his yeah. thesis on video drone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Wow. laughs> yeah. Go figure that one out. They're not together anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we won't dive into that. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's fine. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing though. <laughs> well, yeah. And you also worked with the late, great 
Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes. Yeah. What way a too soon. That was. Yeah. 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 Tragic, what, tragic. Yeah. yeah. And that was yeah. owning Mahoney. So what was it like? Mm-hmm. I just, he was so brilliant in everything he did. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, what was it like working with him? Well, it's just so wonderful because he was, he's obviously such a brilliant actor. Yes. And yeah. so it was just a privilege to work in some scenes with him. And he was very uh, sort of sweet because before we started, he just talked to me and said, sort of, this is the way I work and I will not be, basically, he'll be sort of, because his character was someone who kind of kept to himself and was doing sort of nefarious sort of things. So he said, it's it's sort of, it's nothing personal, but this is what I'll be doing. And I I said, okay, thank you. completely respect that and uh go for it he was he was beautiful in it yeah 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 yeah. gone too soon as i said yeah absolutely absolutely yeah how was it in this film talking to the fourth wall there was something quite wonderful again i was concerned about that i thought i've never done that in film you know it's uh never done that but I came from the theater. I started off in the theater. So perhaps that helped a bit to sort of, um, is that sort of almost like talking to the, well, it's talking to the audience, right? Right. right. And uh, it was quite a wonderful process because in a real way, because of the way she's addressing the camera, it really is um, a live process. It's not sort of really so much saying that happens. It's almost sort of thinking it through almost to herself, trying to figure it out. So it's an active kind of address to camera. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not a, and then this happened and that happened and that happens. Like, get it? There's, there's a whole bunch of quite interesting kind of thought processes, I think, through that, that Joan constructed, which was quite cool. Yeah, I agree. I loved it. I, I just thought yeah. it was just it it just was perfect the way it was done, and mm-hmm. uh, it it yeah it was a, it was a great way to exactly what you just said. You know, find out what she was really thinking, how she really felt. You know, and and then you know feeling like the bringing the audience in mm-hmm. to her yeah. secret world, her thoughts. You know, what she her processing and what she was going through. So. I thought it was a brilliant use of 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 the fourth wall in this particular movie. Yeah, and and we do we we censor ourselves all the time, don't we? And especially, I think, well, in public or in social situations, but even with people that we love, you know, like in her case with her children, you know, you contain your thoughts. You know, you don't necessarily, thank God, sometimes say what you actually are thinking. <laughs> Like, are you an idiot? You know, or whatever it is. You know, they don't like, really. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I am tempering myself. So it was. It was quite wonderful uh, device. Yeah. Yeah, it really yeah. was. So, yeah. had you had you ever worked with Joan before? How did you? You know, you said she no. Brought the script to you. Had you ever worked with her before? I had. I had not. I had not. But uh, I admire some of the other films that that she has done and. And to your point, when you when you were when we started this conversation, there are so few roles for mature women that actually have something to them, you know, that actually, you know, ride a wave and go through processes and 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 changes and evolve. And and it was just a, a pleasure. And she writes that. So, yeah. She- yeah, she did. and she came into this later in life. I find that you know that mm-hmm. and she's very the novelist, prolific. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean she's novelist, very prolific. Yeah. She's a, yeah. a, a prolific filmmaker. I think, as I said, she's been on that show twice before, and I feel yeah. like every year or so there's a new film that she oh, has. Yeah, just she's 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 tiny, but she doesn't stop. <laughs> Yeah, she, she, I hope I, I love what she does. I can't wait to see what she does next. And as I said, I love this film, Better Days, for oh, sure. Right. Thank uh, you. It, for you, uh, what, what, what made you decide to become an actress? Oh, you always wanted to do, or well, you were a young 
young when you were an actress, right? When you first started yes. as an actress, you said you were six or something. You were a child. No, I did. I didn't start. That was somebody else. No, I, oh, somebody else who's six. Okay, you. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. But no, I I grew up in the country and I had a great imagination and spent a lot of time in my imagination as a lot of children do and kind of just always wanted to be an actor though nobody in my family was I but and I think the first time I saw a live performance it was a country kind of place I was just transfixed I just I just loved it so it was just a matter of figuring out how I go about and do that <laughs> figuring that part out it was something I always wanted to do yeah yeah. Was it was it difficult the journey to, because it you know it seems like it's a, it can be incredibly difficult to break uh, into well, the industry. Of, of course, yes, of course it is. You know, and you have your ups and downs, and you things go well, and then you hit a dead space, and you have to figure out how to do uh, how to deal with that. I remember working on a a TV movie, and a more veteran actor, you know, talked to me, and his words stayed with me. He said. Sonia, it's not what you do when you're working so much that will ensure if you survive as an actor. It's what you do when you're not working. Because it's very hard to keep your spirits up, to keep your creativity up, to pay the rent, you know, whatever it is. So how do you keep that? How do you keep that going? And his, he, he was very helpful, those, those words to me when I was going through times where you go, okay, I'm not, I'm not striking. <laughs> So, but it's, uh, it's worked out for me. So. That's great. That's great. Well, you've done an awful lot of television as yeah. well as film work. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, what's the, for you, which do you prefer doing a television series? Cause you were on quite a few television yeah. series in Canada. Yeah I, yeah. I did a number of, uh, series. Um, I like, I mean, what's nice about doing a film or kind of a one-off or doing a play is, is you kind of get to focus on that and that sits and that's done, right? You can mm -hmm. just focus on that. And then, you know, for people who are easily distracted, like myself, maybe then you get something else come up, but doing serious work is very uh, hard work because it's constant, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sustained. It's like a marathon, right? But, uh, but, there's something nice about building that throughout the season or seasons. Like, you know, one ep thing I did, I was 85 episodes. You can wow. really kind of get to live in that world and, 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 and explore that. And it's a different relationship with the audience too, because it's, it's not a one-off. You kind of build a loyalty or whatever with your viewers or relationship that's over time. But I think, I, I mean, I'm someone who's, like I said, I started in the theater, I've done television, I've done theater, I've done done movies. So they all bring something different to it. Sometimes it's nice just to do one little thing and you just go, just focus on that. And then that's it. That's done, right? Yeah. 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 Do you have a preference uh, between the three? Do you prefer the theater um, over a film or film over television? Or I think for me, it's always been either... Uh, that the part's wonderful and you say okay this is actually a, an interesting part this is something i can do something with uh, or or it's that the people involved are interesting you mm -hmm. go okay i don't know quite what this is going like going back to the video drone for instance you know david cronenberg is a very mm, a director with specific sort of tastes and and uh, qualities to his work. And I didn't understand what the movie was about when I read the script, but I knew I had to do it because I just thought, okay, there's something wonderful and strange and fabulous here. So I, but I don't quite understand it, but I want to be a part of whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's, it's the, overall sometimes it's part sometimes it's the overall kind of project and the people yeah what was it like working with him with David Cronenberg uh he's just a lovely kind thoughtful man it's like crazy and Deborah Harry was in it too and that was kind of wow. fun 
because there were scenes that were now deleted. They didn't make the final film where Deborah Harry and I were in the same kind of outfits. Like we were kind of doppelgangers to each other. You know, it's like the height of a combo. Me and Deborah Harry, thank you very much. <laughs> But it didn't make the final cut. Oh no! Have they done <laughs> yeah. a, a, a director's cut now and added Maybe. It back in? <laughs> that would be nice <laughs> for the next generation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> to watch this film. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. How, how long was the shoot for Better Days? It was. You know, I don't remember. It was just, but it was very, very quick. It was quick because it's a small budget. Because Joan wants to make her movies and she does them and does it on a you know, with a lot of restrictions in terms of budget. So she really contains them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I can't even remember. I probably blocked it out because it wasn't that much time at all. And of course, because we were shooting during COVID. I was going to ask you. Okay. Yeah. We shut down halfway through. Oh. We had to shut down. Everybody was getting sick. I ended up getting it too. COVID. And then we were off for three weeks and we went back again. And, uh, finished it up so it was kind of a short amount of shooting but it was a bit spread out because of the interruptions did yeah. you find having that break in between even though it wasn't planned you probably <laughs> haven't really done that through other films i would think do you think that no. was a benefit having a little break do you think that um make well, more time with the character to discover her more come up with new i think things? probably to recover <laughs> <laughs> to recover and have the energy to go back and do okay. it. <laughs> so you really got COVID badly. Or yeah. <laughs> bad COVID. Yeah. Well, Not I a mild case or anything. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. No, it was. Um, and just to recover from, from that kind of a uh, demand because it was a fast shoot and I'm in every scene. So I, yes. you know, you're have you're having to perform at a very, uh, you know, at a, a high level of intensity. Just energy wise right and i'm not 25 anymore (laughs) (laughs) really (laughs) yeah what was it like working with your co-star uh is it was it dean armstrong your love interest dean dean was great he was such a nasty oh my god he was so perfect he was scared me it's like oh my goodness (laughs) yeah and uh yeah, no, it was fun, all the actors. They were, it was just, it was great. And it was nice having, you know, it was nice just to be able to bounce, right? That's Because that's what I like, you know, the most about acting. Like normally, I would never like the idea of doing a one-person show, forget about it. Like, I like the interaction, mm-hmm. you know, so... So they react other actors. It was it was a delight. Yeah, they were fun. All, yeah. all yeah. of those kids that yeah. you were with too were a yeah. lot of fun. I'm yeah. sure too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there were some, some fun scenes there for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's sure. what's Joan's style as a director? She's interesting. It's very interesting because because she's a writer, and that's what she comes mm-hmm. uh, background from is a novelist. You know. Uh, uh, right, and then she wrote the screenplay, which is dense, 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 wording wise, and just do do do. But then, when you get on the set with her as a director, then she says, "Oh, can make it your own." It's like, what do you mean? Like, if, don't don't worry. It's like, what are you talking about? She said, "Oh, forget the writer." You know, it's like, like what are you talking <laughs> about? Forget the writer. You are the writer. So she has a kind of, uh, was interesting, and I don't know if she did that just to, you know, make me feel more comfortable or make it my own. So I made very few changes, but if I wanted to make, you know, a, a little adjustment to have it, have it sit better, she was perfectly cool with that. And so, and she's very kind, very thoughtful, very, very, um, you know, organized. Mm-hmm. which again you have to be right. and very deliberate like the the mise-en-scene the way the way she shot it all that kind of like an old you know 50s movie or whatever with the flat across right you see the action happen right not a lot of intercutting and stuff like that and when we were doing it I thought I don't know how this is going to work there's you know it's not the way I'm used to I'm used to a lot of coverage a lot of cameras coming around the other way but this was very mise en scene, like 
you know, kind of open like a stage almost. But again, I've had people who've said they loved it because you could, it's like what I love about the theater. If you have, you know, a couple of people in a scene, you can, as an audience member, you can sort of, I know, Derek, I want to look at, it's like you're fly on the wall and you can kind of direct your eye where you want it to go and catch little things. It gets, uh, it's an interesting style choice. And I think it worked with this. It is. Yeah. Well, I love Better Days is just a wonderful film. You are amazing in it. Uh, everybody seek it out. It's available now on VOD. Is that correct? And where yeah. else can people see it, Sonia? I think it's 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 VOD in, in, in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. everybody check out Better Days. It's a wonderful film to watch. Uh, it really is. And it, it it's, yeah, it's just a really great movie. And your performance again was wonderful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Have a Take care. Day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.